Hallelujah. Down in my soul cries holy. Down in my sanctified soul and cries holy. Oh, glory. Hallelujah. Amen. Giving honor to God. Pastor of this great church, Reverend Young. Uh, to Reverend Perkins. Amen. To this great choir. Amen. God bless y'all. Amen. To all those uh, for Rock Hill and the visitors and deacons. Amen. I greet y'all all this morning in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. If you have your Bibles, please turn to 1 Samuel. 1 Samuel, the 30th chapter. Amen. And I tell you, I had a good time this week. Uh, Pastor Young was preaching up a storm down there at Nazareth Reform. Amen. He preached one Sunday. One, one, one day it was uh, what? Um, don't lighten up, tighten up. Amen. And he came back that Wednesday and he talked about dusty Bibles lead to dirty living. Oh, glory, hallelujah. God is good. Amen. If you have it, say amen. Let's stand as we read God's word. We're going to start at that sixth verse. And it reads, and David was greatly distressed for the people spake of stoning him because the soul of all the people was grieved and every man for his son and for his daughters but David encouraged himself in the Lord his God and David said to Abthar and the priest and Ahimelech's son I pray thee bring me hither the ephrod and Abathar brought thither the ephrod to David, and David inquired of the Lord, saying, I will, Shall I pursue after this troop? Shall I, I overtake them? And he answered him, Pursue, for thou shalt surely overtake them, and without fail recover all. Yeah. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. God is so good. And then on Thursday night, he preached about, if I knew then what I know now. Yes, sir. Amen. Amen. So I had a lot of preaching this week. Amen. 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 I tell you. Just lay this right here. Amen. I don't, I don't want it to slide off. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, I thank you, Lord, for this opportunity just yes. to stand here, Lord God, on this sacred ground behind yes, this Lord. sacred desk, Lord. Yes. I ask, Heavenly Father, that you would take me out of self, Lord God. Please. And Lord, that you will increase as I decrease. Please, Lord. And these, your people will hear your word. Yes. But it will first start at me, Lord God, that we will be blessed. But we leave out here different, Lord God. And those who need Christ in their life will be saved today, Lord. Oh, in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Our subject today is power lifting techniques. Come on, preacher. Power lifting techniques. All right. Let him use it. I, I watch sometime on the Olympics at different games. And one of the games, uh, one of the events is power lifting. And we have seen those, those big guys, they grab all the weight and seem like the weight is bending on the bar. Yeah. And they lift it up over their head. And then one of the events they have is that when they lay down on the bench press and, and they lift the weight and then they lift it up and sometimes they got to have somebody stand behind them called a spotter Amen. just in case he can't handle that weight. Because right. that's a lot of weight to fall on somebody's neck. Amen. 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 And I'm, I'm pretty sure that it happened to some of y'all. <laughs> amen. Because we, we, we live in the area that believes in football. Amen. Mm -hmm. and, and you can imagine that if you're laying on that bench and you don't have a spotter. Mm -hmm. And all that weight comes across your chest and your neck. 
and, and it is so, so much pressure that you, you can't even really say a word. And you choking and kicking your legs, trying to get from under all that weight. Sometimes life is just like that. But I realize that in this life we will have multiple challenges, multiple tests, going through different experiences. In this life, we will fail some of the tests, but in Christ, we will not fail the course. In this life, we will lose several rounds, but in Christ, we will win the battle. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And we just stick with Jesus. No matter what we go through, we're going to get the victory. Because the victory is in Jesus. Oh, glory, hallelujah. I like when Paul said, we're talking about weights, but I like about what Paul said, even though he was really talking about a runner that was in training, but not, not Paul. A lot of people think Paul wrote Hebrews, amen? amen? But we don't know who the author is. Yes. Don't get that straightened out right now. Amen. But in Hebrews 12 and 1, it tells us that let us lay aside every weight, every weight. and sin which so easily ensnares us. Mm -hmm. In other words, we have to separate ourselves from the weight. Yes. So in order for this weight, um, to be separated, sometimes we have to put our hands on it, amen, and move it out of the way. Now, this is not always an easy task, because if you got weight on you, amen, there's a reason that weight is on you. Uh, uh, you see, sometimes the prisoners got a big bar, get big old ball and chain. And I don't think they do that no more, but, and he has to drag that ball, he can't go nowhere, he's restricted. That weight that is hindering you and holding you back, you got to separate yourself from that weight. I don't know what the weight is in your life today, but weight comes. And, and the Bible tells us that, that David was greatly distressed. He greatly distressed. He wasn't just distressed. He wasn't just upset. But he was greatly distressed. He had a whole lot of pressure on him. And weight brings pressure. Amen? Oh, glory. Hallelujah. But that weight has got to move off you. Because see, if that weight, as long as that weight is sitting on you, you cannot do anything. You can't go nowhere, amen, but just where that weight allows you to go at. And if you got so much weight on you, you can't hardly move. Because I thought about it, I said, you know what, if they got you chained somewhere or to a wall, that's heavy, amen. You can't move that wall or that foundation, that's weight too, amen. You can't do nothing. Oh, glory, hallelujah. That weight, and Paul, and, 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 and David had a lot of weight on him that day. Uh, but when the weight is more than you can bear, just call on the name of Jesus. Call on him, and he'll answer. Uh, but David was greatly distressed. You can imagine why he was so distressed is because that his own men, his own brethren, wanted to stone him to death. Just to give you a little history about David, David really put himself in his own in this situation. A lot of folks don't know because of the different chapters in between, amen? Mm -hmm. What happened was David was running from Saul. Yeah. Saul wanted to kill him, the king. Mm -hmm. and, and we know the story that Saul, David didn't really want to put his hands on Saul. Uh, uh, he, saw, he, he saw Saul in a cave one day and he had an opportunity to kill him. But he didn't. He just tore a piece of his garment. And that was it. Yes. But David had been running for a long time. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we, when we carry weight on us for a long time, we start doing stupid things. Amen. Can I get an amen? amen? When trouble seems to stick around for a long time, we just want to shake it. Amen? Mm -hmm. uh, get it off us. Eh? When sometimes, you know, we can't find a job that we want. Sometimes we're working at our job and we're looking for a promotion and know we deserve it, but somebody else get it. Sometimes we carry a lot of weight on us. Some of us carry a lot of weight, sometimes a sickness. We go into the doctor nearly every week and the doctor say, try this and try that. You got to understand, he's practicing medicine. We don't get that, he's practicing. That's why he can say, try this and try that and, 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 and come back next week and and let me know how that is. And you come back next week and say, Doc, it's still the same. <laughs> Sometimes they like to, to refer you to somebody else who practices. Yes. And let him practice on you a while. Oh, glory, hallelujah. 
I said, if you're practicing, I shouldn't pay you. <laughs> Glory, hallelujah. <laughs> but, 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 but this pressure sometimes causes us to do stupid things. And, and what David did, David, David uh, decided, well, Saul chasing me, and I'm tired of him chasing me. He said, um, now he, he, he did this on his own now. He went to the enemy. And the enemy accepted him. Because the enemy thought that David was now going to be like a traitor and do his bidding. And what David would do, David would, you know, sometimes we do this in the church. Um, um, we do the wrong thing, but uh, we come and we pay our tithe. Amen? <laughs> we, do our, we do our thing, but yet we, we figure that if we come on, on, on around Christmas time to the, to, the, um, to the little program, amen, uh, we show up on Easter. Uh, we show up on um, New Year's Day, so on, on New Year's Eve, amen, so that, uh, 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 that we'll be on our knees when the new year come in. And as soon as the new year come in and they do the benediction, we run down to the club. Uh, amen? So sometimes we think that we can do anything we want to do, but as long as we just do a little bit for the Lord, he is satisfied. But I'm here to let you know that, that, that God is watching. He sits high, he looks low, and he's watching everything. Yeah. You might fool man, you might fool me, but you can't fool God. Yeah. And David decided to join himself with the enemy. Yeah, he did. And what he would do is instead of going out um, 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 raiding the people the enemy wanted him to raid, he'd go and raid his own enemies. He, the king wanted him to raid Israel, his own people, but he wouldn't do it. He'd go out and raid other people that he think the king don't know nothing about. And then when he go and raid these towns, he kill everybody in the town so nobody can tell on him. Sometimes even in our mess, we think we're so smart. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And so David, he done did all this dirt out there. And then when it came time for the Philistines to go up against the Israelites again, he decided, well, I'm going to fight with these Philistines. It's in the Bible, Amen. And David was a great man. He was a man after God's own heart. But I'm going to tell you, sometimes we just mess up. We just do some stupid things sometimes. But that will show you how great God's love is for us. That no matter how low we get, if we just cry out to him, he'll reach way down in that muck and that mire. And he'll pick us up. And he'll clean us off. And he'll turn us in the right direction. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Amen. He, he never went, uh, went, went against Saul until up to this point. But thank God that Philistine king, he listened to his generals, and they said, no, I don't trust this. Because I know David is loyal to Saul. He said, if we get in the middle of the battle, he might turn on us. And so they sent him home, and, and David went home. Because they gave him a city, and I, I wish I could talk about that. The city was his anyway to start off with, but they gave him a city. And the name of the city was Ziglag. Mm -hmm. And he went there, when he, and he had his people there, and then all his men had their people there, their wives and their children there. But when they got there, the place was burned to the ground. Now, the enemy, the Amalekites, didn't do um, David like David did them. He didn't, they didn't kill everybody, amen? Mm -hmm. But they took everybody captive. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Now the pressure is on the leader. Yeah. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Reverend Young, I know you're the pastor, but thing happened, they're going to look to you. <laughs> the pressure going to be on you then. <laughs> and David had a whole lot of pressure on him. Everybody blaming David. And the thing is that when he first got with his brethren in that cave, and they got all together, they was called the brethren, Amen. It was people of the land. Now I see in the Bible it said the people was against him. Yes. They didn't say the brothers was against him. It said the people. Didn't say his soldiers. It said the people. That let you know that sometimes your brother and the folks that you love, sometimes if they turn on you, they just people. Amen? They ain't no more kin to you. They don't more love you. <laughs> you. They just the people. The Bible said the people turned on him. Amen. That's a whole lot of pressure. You look at him, you see your brother doesn't turn on you. And they wanted to stone yeah. David. Now David was in a bad place. Yes, oh, glory, hallelujah. He didn't know what to do. 
And then when you are greatly distressed like that, I don't know if anybody has been there. I've been there. I've been in a, in a situation where, where the pressure was on me and, and I was so distressed, it took me almost seven years to really shake it off. Some folks don't know about that. Yeah. Amen. Sometimes you, some people are so happy go lucky, something happened today and they forget about it tomorrow. Yeah. But when you know that God has called you to do something, yeah. he ain't going to let you rest. Come on now. And then when you start getting into it, what God called you to do, then you realize that certain folks ain't with you. Oh, glory, hallelujah. This brings us some pressure. This is praying time now. But the thing is that we cannot stay down. We got to get up and do what God told us to do. Oh, glory, hallelujah. This is where power lifting technique comes in. Oh, hallelujah. Power lifting techniques. The thing about power lifting techniques is when you look at those guys who lift all that weight, Oh, glory, hallelujah. They just didn't come out their mother's womb, amen, like Bam Bam on Flintstone. Y'all ain't, y'all ain't, they're strong, they're throwing everything around. Something had to be done. They had to have the proper diet, amen. Otherwise, and then their mind had to be right. They had to go through proper training and everything. You can't grab all that weight. You be done tear up something. Oh, glory, hallelujah. You have to go through proper training. Oh, yeah. And God will allow us to get that proper training if we just lean on him. As David was under this intense pressure because of what he knew what God had done for him in the past. Oh, he knew that he was going to be able to call on the Lord. And at this point, he called on the Lord. And the Bible says to use that word again, encouragement. But like the other day, we studied encouragement. It's a little more stronger meaning in the Hebrew. It means to strengthen yourself in the Lord. It means to be fasting and, and, and held fast. That means to be manly about the situation. Like, like when God told Job, he said, now gird up yourself like a man. You've been sitting here crying about this and that and wishing that you've never been born. Gird up yourself like a man. Oh, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. And we've got to realize that now it's time to gird up ourselves like a man. First thing we, we need to do is we need to listen to our spirit man. Our spirit man. See, we got an old man in us. Amen. And then we got the spirit man in us. The spirit man is more in tune to God. The old man just want to have a good time. Right. He's what you call a soul man. <laughs> He's a <the> soul brother. <laughs> oh, glory, hallelujah. But the spirit man, he's more in tune to God. So we got to start listening to the spirit man. And all the, way to, the only way to start listening to the spirit man is, number one, you got to have a good diet. And you got to feed on the word of God. You got to feed on his word. And not only just feed on his word, but you got to be doers of his word. I'm pretty sure somewhere and along the line, you've had to read a manual to put that shelf together, amen? To put that bicycle together. You had to read a manual. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And if you read the word of God, it would help you to get to that place you need to be. And the next thing it says, go directly into it with a clean heart, a praise and worship. You see, in that next verse, we see that Jesus, that, that, that David called for the ephrod. The ephrod stands as a, 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 as a worshiping um, garment that the priests used. And the high priest used that when they was going in to intercede for the people and for himself to splash blood on the altar for the sins of the people that he would have on an ephrod. See, the thing is, not only just reading the word and doing the word, amen, and going in with a clean heart and asking God for forgiveness, we got to be really in a worshiping experience. We got to be in a praising experience in order to be, uh, uh, be ready to lift that weight. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Some of you don't know what I'm talking about. So that's, see, the Bible says that we got to enter his gates with thanksgiving, amen. 
we got to be pumped up when we get here. Let's imagine that we get pumped up when we come in here. Imagine how we're going to leave here. We're going to leave here more pumped up. We're going to leave here with great joy when we leave here. Oh, glory, hallelujah. hallelujah. Amen. We got to be ready. As we, got, as, we, as we begin to praise God, because let me tell you something. Another thing I know is about them weightlifters and even on the football field. You see, they get pumped up. Amen. Amen. They get there and they clap their hands and they say, oh, yeah, I can do this. I can do this. I can do this. Yeah. And they got people in the crowd go, yeah, hey, you'll pull it, pull it, whatever. You know what I mean? They're behind them. That's how we got to be with Lord. We got to praise him. Yeah. Give him the thanks because we know that he's able yeah. to bring us out of all situations. Amen. You just got to get pumped up. We don't want to get pumped up. We want to stay in our old mess. But if you praise him, he'll bring it out. If you begin to worship him in our life living, he'll bring it out. And after we've gotten a clean heart and we went to God's word and now we're ready to really enter into the presence. Because see now, see we've gotten, see you, some folk don't understand, see there's going to be a lot of garbage in our life. And we got to get all that. We got to lay aside all that weight and everything. All that sin. So when we go in the presence of God, we're going in for something serious. We're being greatly distressed. The pressure's on. We don't know where to, what to do. We don't know where to go. So we got to go to the Lord. And the best thing to do is to go to him with the cleanest heart, the humblest spirit that you possibly can have. It's the reason for it. So when he speaks to you in that still, quiet voice, you'll hear him. You can't hear with a lot of garbage going on. Can I get an amen? You can't hear with all that garbage. Oh, glory, hallelujah. And next thing I say, when the Lord said, move, move. When he said, move, move. David had on the ephrod, and I can imagine that he took that ephrod off in time for war now. Amen. It is time to go forward into battle. And the Bible tells us that he went after the enemy. And when he got to the enemy, the enemy was in a big party. Them jokers was drinking and partying and having a good time. And he was able to sneak up on them and take back everything. His men now was happy. Amen. Everything was all right. So when pressure is on you, you need to turn to the Lord. That is power, your power lifting experience. Because the weight is on you so heavy, you can't move it. Sometimes you can't even talk. If you're laying on your back in your sick bed, like the old folks say, all you, sometimes all you can do is just wave your hand. I don't know if you've ever been that way. I don't know if you've ever been in a situation where it looked like you might be homeless because you can't pay your mortgage. Look like the light bill is so far back that your light's going to get cut off. Look like you have to walk the floor all night long because your loved one is sick and ill. I'm telling you, you got to have power lifting technique. You got to know how to step up, step into God, and say it's not by my power, not by my might, but it's by the Lord's power, by his might. Because I know I can do all things through Christ that strengthened me. Power lifting technique. Oh, glory, hallelujah. Amen. We need power lifting techniques. That's why I always preach when I'm preaching. And I say the same thing over and over again. Folks don't know what I'm talking about. I say when Jesus came and he walked this dust the earth and they lied on him, they talked about him, but still yet he healed the sick. He gave sight to the blind. He caused the lame to walk. The paralyzed that got up off their bed. He raised the dead out of the grave. The same Jesus. But they took him and they put him on a cross. And he hung there for my sins and your sins. And he died out on the cross. And Jesus, they took Jesus and put him in the bull bar too. But early. Early Sunday morning, he got up out of the grave. And this is what I say over and again. The same power that rose Jesus from the grave, if you are saved, if you are sanctified, you've been washed in the blood of Jesus, 
the same power that raised Jesus when the light bill do, when the mortgage do, when you're sick in the body, when your kids acting wrong, when your wife acting wrong, your husband acting wrong, the pressure's on you, that same power, that same weight lifting power, that same Holy Ghost power will lift you up and give you the victory. God bless you. be to God. I said glory be to God. Amen. Let me be somebody here today. You've got weight on you right now. And you need some power lifting technique. Oh glory. Hallelujah. I'm telling you Jesus is the best weight lifting coach in the world. The best weight lifting coach. Of course, he'll be a weightlifting coach in this part. Amen. All you have to do is give your life to him. Join his team. And he'll help you. You may come now. You may come now. 